Hi, my name is Nick Sharon. And my name is Stephen Phillips. And we're PhD students from the University of Waterloo in the Structural Dynamics Identification and Control Lab. So we got our hands on the CARTA stencil um, and we got to play around with it, um, trying to incorporate it in our research. And today we're going to talk about um, how we used it and what we liked about it. So we focus on SLAM or 3D mapping for infrastructure inspection. So how can we quickly scan an environment um, and detect defects in that, those types of environments? So we have our own mapping kit that we've been working on over the last few years. Um, and over the last week or so, we've been uh, using the CARTA to help um, see what kind of mapping results we can get with that. And we've tried to see how we can incorporate that with our current robotics. So there are two different mapping modes. Um, there's mapping with camera and mapping without camera. So um, depending on the type of environment that you want to map in, you can map using the visual data from the camera or using just the LiDAR data on its own. So if you're doing more aggressive type motions or you're in an environment that's not very structured, um, that you can't localize well just based on LiDAR scans, um, you can use the visual data on board the camera to actually track environmental features and use that to help localize the unit. In terms of actual setup, there's not really that much you need to do to get the thing set up um, to be ready to start mapping. The mapping can be done mainly on board this thing without using any sort of other devices. So there's buttons on here for starting and stopping the mapping. Um, so it's really useful for going on site without having to carry too much with you. Um, you can just carry it around, press the button to start, start and stop the mapping, and you're, that's pretty much it. So if you're just focused on uh, localization on its own, um, it's probably ideal to hold it level and just move around uh, with it level like that. However, if you do want to get better coverage, you can actually rotate the LiDAR as you're walking to get full coverage of the walls and the ceiling. Um, if you are rotating it to get better coverage, you do have to have the camera turned on. So any more aggressive motions, you do have to have the camera on for that. Um, however, it does work really well um, in terms of getting full coverage. So we've done lots of tests where we've rotated the thing as we walk and we can get full coverage of the environments around us. You can also use the tablet, the iPad here, to um, start and stop the mapping and change a lot of the settings. So typically what we would do is we would either use the tablet or connect this to a monitor um, and we would tune the settings for our environment that we want to map. Um, and then we would just take this and start and stop with the button on board. So one thing that the, the tablet is really useful for is that as you're using the stencil, as you're mapping, uh, you can actually use the tablet to, in real time, visualize the current map that you, you're building. So if you notice that you're missing out on an area and you want to collect more data, uh, you can immediately see on the tablet and then change, how you're, uh, change where you're collecting data. So our experience with the mapping, um, for most of the environments that we've scanned, it has performed really well. And we've been really surprised with how, uh, how well the, the mapping works in most types of scenarios. So we've mapped industrial facilities, so our structures lab, uh, we've mapped hallways um, and we've mapped some, some bridge sites where we've gone underneath bridges and um, in very um, difficult type of environments for SLAM uh, where there's lots of vegetation and water and that kind of stuff. And overall, we've been able to produce pretty good maps um, based on tuning the settings for that specific environment. So we've been really happy with how well that works. So we've also used this um, kit on board our robot to replace our localization module that we currently use. So we've developed our own SLAM modules um, to localize the robot as it drives, and then we have an inspection or a mapping module. So we've integrated that on our robot within maybe an hour or two, and we can use the trajectory estimate from this, which works really well in most types of environments, to actually produce our maps and do our inspection on board. So overall, we're really pleased with how well we can integrate that, how little amount of time it takes to actually um, strap this to our robot, um, connect, and be able to use all of the ROS data that's being published on this on board our robot. So after we've collected the data with this, uh, it will automatically build a map of the environment. Uh, and with that, you can do any kind of post-processing you want. So the, the stencil comes installed with uh, a program called Cloud Compare, uh, which is just an open source viewer and editing tool for looking at point clouds. Uh, in addition, so like Nick said, we've been really, really impressed with the quality of the mapping uh, that we've been able to get with this. Uh, I actually took this on probably like a two kilometer long mapping uh, trek around the Waterloo campus. Uh, and over two kilometers, it's uh, very reasonable to expect that the estimate will drift. So I did a complete loop. I came back to exactly where uh, I started at. And the estimate of where I was was off by a couple of meters. 
So what's really nice about the stencil is that it comes with tools for correcting for that. Uh, so for improving your estimate even after you've collected data. So uh, what they, they call it the loop closure tool. And essentially what it does is it, it will go through your recorded data and it uses a tool called ISAM, which is an incremental smoothing and mapping tool. Uh, and with that, it can, do, it can introduce loop closures into the SLAM problem. So even though when I collected data, the map drifted over the two kilometers, uh, I was able to go back in and use this loop closure tool and it completely corrected for that. So uh, that's, that's really useful, especially when you're working in, in tough environments. Uh, another tool that they have for improving the quality of maps is their sharpening tool. So you can take your final point cloud map and run this, uh, this point cloud sharpener which uh, effectively just goes in and it reduces noise by kind of smoothing the point cloud, uh, which is also a really, a really useful tool. Another tool that it does come with is a floor plan um, creator. So it will take your point cloud and generate floor plans. Uh, we didn't have a chance to use that, but uh, it, in the documentation they have some results which also look really, really cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, between you know, the tools that they've designed and then Cloud Compare, uh, it's really easy to go in and quickly uh, process your maps after they've been generated. In terms of alternative mapping kits um, for doing the same type of work, um, there are a few uh, options that, out there that you can purchase. In terms of building your own system, um, there aren't that many open source SLAM um, software that you can just run on your own data sets um, to get similar level of accuracy as the uh, as the stencil. So you can actually install Loam and we've done that, we've tested that on our own data, so that's publicly available. Um, however, there's been a lot of um, optimization that's gone on to this because comparing our results to the results from this with just Loam and then the mapping without the camera, um, this performs significantly better. Um, Loam would crash often um, and just not give the same level of accuracy when you're just using it directly from um, the open source software. So it's definitely uh, more advantageous to use this version because there's been clearly a lot of work that went into optimizing it. So another alternative for doing mapping or doing uh, laser scanning is to use a terrestrial laser scanner like a, a Faro or a Regal. Uh, and with, with those types of laser scanners, you get really, really high accuracy, uh, much much better accuracy than using a stencil. However, you also have to pay a lot more for the actual uh, terrestrial laser scanner, and it also takes much, much longer. So whereas you could scan like an entire building with a stencil in maybe like 15 minutes, if you're using a terrestrial laser scanner, it would take a team of two people an entire day uh, to do that. So depending on the application, the stencil is definitely, uh, definitely worthwhile compared to the terrestrial laser scanners. So from, from a research point of view, there are a lot of roboticists or a lot of robotics researchers who are looking at applications where they, uh, their area of research isn't necessarily SLAM, but they need SLAM to do their research. So people looking at stuff like uh, autonomous navigation or um, object detection, stuff like that, uh, they really don't want to dedicate an entire PhD student just to develop uh, their own SLAM system. So the stencil is really advantageous here because you can just uh, take it and put it on your system and you can immediately enable all of the research that you actually want to work on. So my favorite thing about the stencil was how easy it was to integrate with a robot. Um, like I said before, it took maybe an hour or two to get it working um, seamlessly with our robot and we could use the information directly for our downstream processing. Right, and just to add on to that, so uh, in, in, the, in our robots, it's really important that we have all of our sensors be synchronized. So having them all being timestamped on the same uh, frame of reference uh, and also actually like triggering these sensors. So the stencil comes set up with uh, the necessary tools for doing that time synchronization so that we could run our robot which has uh, cameras and other LIDARs and our clocks were completely synchronized with the clock on the stencil. Uh, in addition to that, the stencil comes with a custom cable for connecting with the Velodyne. So if we really wanted to, we could actually get full hardware synchronization as well, where we use the, the signals that they're using for triggering to trigger our sensors as well. The other thing I liked about the stencil was the documentation. So there's a lot of information in the documentation 
um, that really go through and tell you how to tune the parameters. So there are a lot of parameters, and based on the type of environment that you're performing SLAM in, um, you can really change the outcome of the, um, the accuracy of the system with the t when you tune the parameters. So there's a, a lot of information in the documentation where if you're not a SLAM expert, you can read through that and say, okay, I'm typing for, or I'm mapping for a very open outdoor environment, so I should set the parameters to this, this, and this. And it has basically lists of um, optimal parameters to use for different type of mapping environments. So that was really cool. So you don't really have to um, guess or play around with it too much. You can use a lot of their information in there. So another thing that I really liked about it is the actual just uh, hardware design. So they use this uh, Intel Nuke for the onboard computer. And they've, uh, I think they've done a really good job in designing the, this actual chassis. So they have these custom buttons, which are for uh, actually turning on the sensors and also for controlling the starting and stopping of scans. So although it comes with a tablet, uh, if you really wanted, you could just take the, the stencil out and uh, literally you don't need anything else. You can just directly work with the stencil. Um, they also have this, uh, there's a cool USB blink dongle here. So all of the actual like progress that's going on is indicated uh, visually just by blinking in different colors. So it, it makes it really easy, really intuitive to see what's going on. So you can see, is it processing? Is it mapping? Is it successful? Um, and even like status of the computer, like, you know, is the, is the hard drive running out of space? So I, I think they did a really good job with that. Overall, we're really pleased with the performance of the stencil in terms of map quality and how easy it is to use. Um, whether you're industry and you're looking for an off-the-shelf solution or whether you're a researcher and you want to accelerate your research, it's a perfect uh, solution for that. So yeah, we'd like to thank ClearPath Robotics for letting us use it and we look forward to um, testing future products from Cartel.